Today we are celebrating the Feast of Sexagesima, which of, of course is the second Sunday before the holy season of Lent. And my sermon this morning is based upon the gospel, which we just heard, coming to us from the eighth chapter of St. Luke's gospel, beginning in the fourth verse. The seed is the word of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, my dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ. In this eighth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, we are hearing our blessed Savior tell the parable of the sower in the field. This parable is mentioned not only in St. Luke's Gospel, but also appears in St. Matthew's Gospel and also St. Mark's Gospel. All of them are roughly the same length, if you will. St. Luke's is slightly abbreviated other than St. Mark and St. Matthew. St. Luke is just a little bit shorter, but nonetheless, they all still tell this parable that our Lord told the disciples. In this parable that we hear being told today, the interesting thing, at least in regards to what our Lord was preaching and what he was talking about was not only did he tell the parable, but then he also explained it afterwards. He wanted a great detail explaining to them, to his hearers, what he had just spoken about. So in essence, he was. this is a retelling, if you will, of his preaching. Just like if you go to Mass or if you hear the homilist, the preacher, the priest, give his sermon, give his homily. This, in essence, is what our blessed Lord is doing, as we heard today. He is retelling what the parable means. Again, in St. Luke, in the 10th verse that we heard today of the 8th chapter, we hear the following. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Some commentators and some people who read this have trouble explaining this or understanding this, because while they read it at surface level, if you will, or they just read the words as it is, they cannot understand in their mind, why would our Lord say something purposely that people do not understand? But keep in mind, as he stated, as I just read to you, he is simply pointing out that some people don't take the time and don't take the effort to see with their eyes, or hear with their ears. In other words, this is true even of our, of our society, of our generation, which we live today. Some people do not make the effort to understand. Keep in mind, all of us, when we are interested in something, and this is certainly true for myself, when we are interested in something, we take the time, we make the effort, to try to understand what that in particular interest is. So whether we like old movies or whether our hobby is woodworking or whether our hobby is cooking, the list goes on and on. Each one of us can come up with an example of something in which it interests us. And so as a point, you see, we make the effort, a concerted effort, to understand, to pay attention, and to understand what it is exactly is, is being discussed. This is, I think, what our Lord, again, was trying to point out, was that some people, you see, will make the extra effort to understand a parable. Some people will think about the words that they've just heard, and then as a result, the proverbial light bulb goes off above their head. They understand because they've made a point to understand. But keep in mind, as I just read to you from that 10th verse, 
This harkens back to the Old Testament as well in the book of the prophet Isaiah. If we look to the sixth chapter and the ninth verse, we hear this. Go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Isaiah was speaking to the stiff-necked people. I always like that phrase, a stiff-necked people, people who are so proud and people who are so haughty, people who are so set in their ways that they don't make a point, they don't make an effort to see, to hear, or to understand. They don't make the effort to perceive as Isaiah mentions. And so this is what our Lord is also referring to, keep in mind. This is why it goes back to says in the previous verse, our Lord emphasized this. He says, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, this is a way to emphasize, pay attention, I'm speaking to you. This is what is important to hear, to understand, and to understand to, you have to pay attention, in other words. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. As I say so often, and this is true of myself, I, I know this from personal experience. Sometimes I hear something, but if I'm not paying attention, I have to turn around and say, what, what, what was that? What was that? I, I, I didn't hear that. It wasn't that I didn't hear it. I heard it. I wasn't paying attention. This is how it is with things of spirituality, things of religion, things of God. We have to make the point to listen and pay attention. This is what our Lord is emphasizing when he told this parable. Our Lord goes on in this parable to mention four different examples. First, he says, the fowls of the air devoured it, meaning, de <clears throat> excuse me, devoured the seed that the sower was sowing. Secondly, some of the seed fell on rocky ground. Thirdly, some of the seed fell among thorns or briars. And then finally, some of the seed fell on good ground. In this first example that our Lord said in this parable, again, the seed that is being sown by the sower, some of it is being devoured by the fowls of the air. In other words, eaten up by birds. Of course, this is an analogy our Lord used for the devil, talking about how the seed, again, as he stated, keep in mind in what we heard, the seed is the word of God. And sometimes the seed gets planted in your heart, but then the birds or the fowls of the air, meaning the devil, come and snatch it up, take away the seed. This is more than true in our society today, and I dare say it's been true of every society since these words were originally spoken, since this parable was originally spoken. The devil is very cunning. He's a cunning enemy. He knows what ways he can influence a person, and he uses that to his advantage. And so he grabs that word away. He grabs that seed away out of our hearts. Certainly, as we heard here in St. Luke's gospel that we heard, St. Luke makes the effort in the 12th verse that we heard. He says, Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts lest they should believe and be saved. This last part, lest they should believe and be saved, this is something that St. Luke added. He added this part in, of the saying of our Lord. 
whereas the other ones, the other evangelists don't, St. Matthew and St. Mark. St. Luke made the point to add on to here, the, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Don't ever let the devil take the word of God, the seed planted in your hearts. Do your best not to let the devil, to let Satan take the word of God out of your hearts so that you won't believe and won't be saved. You see, because if that happens, then the devil gets the ultimate victory. And this is not something that we should, should want or desire. Secondly, the example of the rocky ground. Our Lord was making the point that when some of the seed gets sown on rocky ground, of course the people, what he's meaning is they hear the word of God and they do take joy in that, but because there is no root, the seed cannot, cannot grow because it doesn't have a root. The root, of course, is Christ. Christ is our root that we are established on. And if we look back to Proverbs in the 12th chapter and the third verse, we hear, a man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of righteousness shall not be moved. As long as we recognize that Christ is the root upon which we are established as Christians, our root is of righteousness because Christ is righteousness himself. And therefore, you see, we cannot be moved so Christ always has to be our root. The third example that our Lord uses is seeds that fell among thorns. Now, oftentimes we think of thorns, and they are. Thorns are prickly and pointy and sticky, and they hurt if you get poked with them. But St. Luke made a point to hear, to cite here, those among thorns are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life. The example is this. Thorns don't always mean pain. Thorns can mean choked with the pleasures and the riches of this life. And again, that describes our society to a T. So many people are concerned with the ways in which they can get pleasure, get riches, be happy, get more and more and more and more. They are choked with the cares and the pleasures and the riches of this life. What we need to be concerned about is being focused on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is what our focus should be on, not the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life. St. Paul himself even said in the second Corinthians, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Even St. Saint Saint Paul makes this point. A thorn in the flesh is what the devil uses to buffet us. And then finally, the seed that fell on good ground, it brought forth fruit. Ye shall know them by their fruit, we hear in St. Matthew. And then again, every good tree that bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Our fruit that we bring forth is the fruit of Christ. He is planted deep in our hearts. And so as a result, when we see people, we show forth Christ, not ourselves, but Christ who is within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.